it's wrap up time. <laughs> so honestly, I was thinking before I started this video that this month was all over the place for me reading wise. Um, and also personally speaking, cause I had my test and then it was just like, I was like, what do I do with myself now that I don't have to study 24 seven? Um, so yeah, let's just get, let's just get right into it. I'm glad I started off the month with a bang and sadly things kind of went downhill and they kind of picked back up. But the first book I read, um, was on earth were briefly gorgeous by ocean Vong. I did this as a buddy read with Ben, but Honestly, I feel bad <laughs> because I was, uh, I read this before my uh, LSAT, which was the 10th of April. So I was just like, not, I wish I could have dedicated a bit more time to like talk through things with my bae, but sadly that did not happen. However, I did really enjoy the book um, immensely. I don't want to talk too much because I think there's already a plethora of great reviews on this book out he there so you don't really need to listen to what I have to say but um it's uh basically a story about a boy who uh writes a uh, letter to his mother who's illiterate and he's kind of unearthing um his childhood and thinking through um certain events that happened with his mom, his grandmother, um, his first love. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a little heart shattering. <laughs> like I was this close to crying. Um, the writing is phenomenal. Um, I really appreciated the tenderness in which um, Little Dog, that's how the main character is referred throughout the book, um, the tenderness that he has for his grandmother and his mother and um how beautifully he writes about about these figures actually he writes beautifully about literally every person <laughs> every character um so that's not you know that distinguishing but i just thought that that was the way that that was done was really gorgeous um what else i actually wrote some things down so i don't forget <laughs> in terms of what i want to say for each book um yeah, so I felt really connected to the characters as well. He, Ocean Vong does a beautiful job of crafting such complex, nuanced, multi-dimensional characters that you can't help but just, just love. Like I literally wanted to hug Little Dog the entire time, just like bring him into the fold <laughs> and just shower him with so much love. But um, yeah, I loved it. This is actually the first book that I have ever gone ham with the dog earring because there were so many pages and passages actually that I just underlined um, and just starred because I think this is a really valuable book to come back to and read again and again because the, the passages in this and the prose are just 10 out of 10. So I'm going to stop raving about it. You don't need me to tell you to pick this up. I feel like, I feel like you know already. <laughs> okay. The next one I read uh, this month was there's no such thing as an easy job and I'm going to spare you. Okay. Actually I have it right here. Where is it? Oh, I put my camera. This is how relevant that book is that I literally used it to prop up my phone to film this. <laughs> but, um, no, that was, that was a little mean. Anyways, I'm going to spare you guys. If you want to hear my thoughts on that book, I will leave a link down below, downstairs. Um, and um, yes, you can watch it if you are interested, but that was not my jam. The next book I read was Deacon King Kong, which I don't have physically. Actually, I don't have a physical copy of a few of the books I'm going to talk about next because they are my library picks for this month, which that was... Also very fun. I'm glad I went to the library. I'm glad I just picked up random books that spoke to me and uh, some I liked and some I didn't. So yeah, Deacon King Kong, who's it by? Okay, it's by James McBride and I really enjoyed this book. Um, like I said, I also mentioned this book in another video, but uh, the kind of starting jumping off point is a uh, church deacon in a 
suburb in or in a neighborhood <laughs> in Brooklyn um, shoots the like main drug dealer who's a 19 year old boy who him and the deacon actually had a previous relationship because he came from a broken home and the deacon kind of took him under his wing and taught him baseball and Sunday school and anyways it's that's kind of the jumping off point but the story goes way beyond that initial uh, like conflict I guess you could say or event and it actually includes a whole web of characters that live in this neighborhood ranging from the um, black ladies from the church as well as um, the deacon's friends uh, one of them being like a Dominican fellow um, and another uh, black man from the south where the deacon is from as well as we've got an Irish cop that kind of plays a big role in the story as well as a uh, Italian mafioso that kind of reminded me of Tony Soprano from the Sopranos <laughs> if Tony was like a sad boy um, and never met Carmela anyways this is irrelevant but yeah so the story weaves in all these characters and they're all obviously kind of like connected to one another um, it sort of read to me like a movie like I was really able to picture the scene and the characters and the characters were actually really well fleshed out considering that it was like 10 of them and the book wasn't like super long. So I really admired that, um, how the author managed to do that. Like none of them kind of felt, fell flat to me. And, um, I found the story really interesting, but, um, yes, that's, I realize I'm not giving very much cause I feel like this is just a book that you go and, and read, but yes, it, it really just was very cinematic to me and I could just picture that, uh, book being turned into a movie so the next book I read was Sheila Hetty's How Should a Person Be again I've already discussed that one so I'm gonna just skip and I will link the video down below uh, where I talk about that book quite a lot so watch it if you are curious the next book I want to talk about was incredible if there's one video no try that again. If there's one book that I highly encourage you to get after this video is Fresh Water by Akaweki Amezi. I hope I'm saying their name right. This author, they're a freaking genius. Like, oh my god, that book was so unique and so thought-provoking. I've never read anything like it. Like, from literally page number one, I was already sucked in and I was sucked throughout the entirety of the book. Like I read it so fast. I was so immersed. Um, so much so that I really want to see if I can get any of their other uh, works. I know that they wrote um, The Death of the Vec OG, which I have not read. Um, but wow, they're a freaking gem. Like so fire. Okay. But anyways, the story itself, I'm hesitant to um, share too much because truth be told, I didn't know anything going into that book other than like a vague, vague memory of CJ from CJ Reads mentioning that book, but I don't remember like what she said about it. And I'm glad that, that was the case because um, I think a book like that is worthy of not knowing like any context but I'll give you a little bit so maybe skip this part if you don't want to know and just like trust me go into it blind but if you are a little bit curious then keep on watching so the story basically is about a uh, young uh, gal uh, she's referred to as Ada or Ada in the book and she's inhabited by all these spirits so um, the book is written from different perspectives uh, ranging from Ada or Ada herself, as well as the spirits that live within her. Um, and we see like their point of view essentially. And it kind of weaves in uh, Igbo people's like mythology. Um, like, yeah, it's kind of mythological. The prose are just beautiful, written in such a interesting voice. And I think the author did an 
awesome job of creating a different like atmospheric feel for each of the different like spirits whenever we hear their voice um the tone just changes the 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 prose just oh it's so freaking good um yeah so ada we follow her since the day she's like conceived pretty much in in utero to uh well, I'm not going to spoil anything, but throughout the entirety of her life, essentially, which I love books like that. Um, I It gives me so much time to just get super close to the character, build a relationship, build that bond, and um, love it when they guide me through, through their lives. But uh, yeah, I think it does a really beautiful job, too, of exploring the, like, spirit, mind, binary... Um, I read somewhere that like, this is like uh, an expose of like mental illness, but I did not see it like that. I saw it more as like magical surrealism, like these spirits, like more of like Nigerian mythology or I don't know, that's how I interpreted, but I guess it's up to everyone obviously to interpret. Um, but yeah, it's super nuanced. It's really, really, uh, complex like I said very thought-provoking and um explores the like in between if that makes any sense like it's very very nuanced and I could not have loved it more that's all I'm gonna say I don't think I did a very good explanation but just trust me like just get it you'll love it you'll love it <laughs> um and the last book that I read this month was uh The House Guest which by Amparo Davila, translated by, who is this translated by? Audrey Harris and Matthew Gleason, or Glasson. Who knows? But um, I was very excited to read this, and I um, feel like I may have just rushed through this book or something because, truth be told, I felt like every story fell a little bit short. Like, I know it's a short story collection, so obviously I'm not expecting like this very like, you know, complex story in like a matter of like a couple pages, but I just felt like some of them could have done with just like one or two more pages or like had a little bit more like detail or grittiness within that short page counter or um, uh, word count, I guess. Um, I did find the writing pretty incredible like there were certainly stories where like certain sentences or certain um passages I was pretty blown away especially because I imagine that um the Spanish translation must not have been an easy one um so I think that the translators as well as obviously the author themselves um did a really great job of painting um the the scene, I guess you could say, but yeah, like I said, I just felt like the story itself, the stories themselves weren't like, whoa, like that was crazy. I don't know. Like, I feel like I was expecting like some wild shit to go down and I was, I kept on like waiting and waiting and I just didn't really happen. Um, it wasn't bad by any means. I just think I had like slightly higher expectations going into it, but, um, the stories that stood out to me were music concrete or concrete and hot cuisine, hot, hot cuisine and music concrete, the two French ones in the entire thing. Like I could have said the Spanish one, but <laughs> anyways, yeah. So those are my, the, the ones that stood out to me, but yeah, I don't know. I was just, I wanted a little, I wanted to like this more. I wanted a little more out of this one, but I'm still glad I read it. Um, and I'm actually glad that I read this with my babe Ben. Uh, we unintentionally did a buddy read and, um, yeah, I was like nervy to be like, I don't know, man, like none of these are like wowing me. And he was like, me too. So that was validating. You know, when you hear somebody else who's like opinion you trust and you f almost feel like you're missing something when like other people are like, this was amazing. And you're like, oh, I just didn't feel the same way. So anyways, I'm glad I'm not alone is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, that was all of the books I read in April. Like I said, it was kind of a, uh, the books were kind of a hit or miss, but I did end up reading like a phenomenal book that I will remember so much so that I'm actually 
uh, well, I got it from the library, but I was like, I need to have this book as part of my collection. And then my boyfriend was giving me a hard time because he's like, that kind of defeats the purpose of why you started going to the library. Because I was like, I need to buy it. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a list of any titles that um, really blew me away from the library. And what I'm going to do is just have them on this list. And if I see them at a secondhand store or like a used bookstore or whatever, then I will buy it because I'm in no rush to have them in my collection, but I would like to have, you know, any book that I get from the library at some point behind, behind here. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm gonna do. So Freshwater is definitely one that I'm gonna be on the lookout next time I go out either thrifting or uh, to a used bookstore. Um, so yeah, that kind of wraps everything up. I did wanna say just one corny, <laughs> corny thing. Uh, that I'm really, really appreciative of every single person that um, comments. I get really excited when I start to see, you know, the, my familiar peeps. Um, and I'm just really thankful for this beautiful community and for um, being able to interact with so many of you, as well as just my um, beautiful friends that have come into my life because of this. Um, in real life. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, I know you don't have to and I really appreciate that you do because I was like a silent viewer for many years <laughs> and I should have been commenting and creating these, you know, dare I say bonds? Is that like too intense? But anyways, I should have just started this way uh, sooner as, as a viewer myself. But um, yeah, anyways, sorry about, about this cheesy uh, end to the video, but I just, I don't know, it just really touches my heart when I see that as well as just um, when I see my usual uh, people that comment uh, reach out or I reach out to them on Instagram. Oh yeah, I have an Instagram at, at uh, Literary Iggy if, if you want to follow me. Anyways, it's just been super nice. So I appreciate every single one of you and um, just thank you, thank you. Hope you guys have a beautiful day and I will be back. <laughs>